So I have no slides. I can probably draw some stuff on that little flip chart we got. But um, I sell SDN supposedly for Cisco, supposedly. Um, ACI is the product line that I mainly focus on. So question for you is, what do you think of SDN? Where are you at with SDN? Um, do you have any real knowledge of it? Do you think it's something real? Where do we start this conversation? I have 40 minutes to waste of your time. Uh, I think with most people, there's, it's sort of the, uh, the, the big unknown. It, it's, the, it's still the answer of, am I going to be a network engineer or a programmer? And how do I marry the two together? Um, and so I think that, that, that I think that's still, a, at least when I talk to my customers, that's still the, the big unknown in their heads, which is, okay, what does this really do for me? And then how, how, um, how do my engineers and my employees' skill sets, uh, how should we be developing those to reflect that need? So they're still trying to get over the need part before they even tackle the, well, my guys just, they just assume that their employees are simply not going to be suited for it and they're going to have to be enabling, training, replacing something. So I, I just want to make sure that we rephrase everything so that we're on the same page. So the idea is that you're absolutely in the understanding that something is going to change, that the network is going to change. How do the people that do it adapt? Yeah. Okay. Especially knowing that change is still as of yet undefined. That's fair. Is that, is that a common thing or is there something else we want to cover? Uh, uh, there are some confusion about SDN and network virtualization because uh, they can be a little different. Uh, SDN can be applied also to uh, hardware level. Bare metal switches uh, are uh, a different approach, not necessarily an overlay to the uh, network, but uh, an underlay <laughs> to the physical part. So there are a uh, lot of aspects and uh, probably mm, network people are looking uh, at the uh, overall but other people are just looking at, uh, at what is network virtualization and uh, maybe does not understand all the, all the picture. So then the, the second piece is when we start to look at SDN, how do we look at the physical box that routes the packets versus the software that sits on top of that and the control system that sits on top of that and the rest? And then again, it, I think it tails back right into your question is how does my normal network engineer manage that? Is that fair? Okay. Uh, so. It's a, where I would see SDN right now is a, a very interesting place, and I'm not here to actually sell you anything that comes from Cisco or any other product, and if I get fired at the end of this presentation, it would probably not be the first time. Uh, the idea is, take a look at the word cloud. How many of you got very, very irritated with the word cloud five years ago, and it made your skin crawl? Still doing <laughs> Yeah, still, still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> still today, and most of us sat around and we like argued about what is and what isn't a cloud and what's not. And now cloud is just ubiquitous. We understand it. It's a term. It's out there, right? Look at cloud. If I said cloud was a methodology of how we deliver compute resources, how you can deliver a service or an application, would you agree? Now, you can do that privately. You can do it publicly. You can do it in a hybrid cloud. Is that all fair? Underneath that, I can deliver you infrastructure. I can deliver you software. I can deliver you platform. Is that all fair? SDN's kind of getting to that point. It's, it's the methodology of the fact that the network itself is broken. We have not properly fixed it and moved it forward over the last 20 years. How many of you are networking professionals have spent most of your careers in the networking space? So that's what we had about half the room, or half the, the audience here. Uh, so I, I call you two different things, uh, and I've spent a lot of years in networking. Um, so I call you two different things. One, I will call you a goat, um, but that takes a little longer explanation. The reason I call you a goat comes from a, a, a gentleman who I respect a lot who's a chef. Uh, goats are a very adaptable animal. The goats can figure out and move and do things to d differentiate into whatever the environment gives them. The thing I prefer is MacGyver, and I know I'm in Europe, so I'm, I'm going to just guess that you may have seen or heard of the American TV show MacGyver from the 80s. Now MacGyver could sit in any room over a 30 minute episode and given anything laying around, grab that microphone and that cord and the, this, that and the other and save the day. Is that fair enough assessment? 
As networking professionals, we've done the same thing for 20 straight years. There's a difference. We have not been able to reset every 30 minutes. We have not had the episode, the TV series issue, where every 30 minutes we come up with a new problem. And the duct tape and bubble gum that MacGyver uses for us is IP and spanning tree. Any problem we've ever been thrown, we fix it with IP and spanning tree in some new and different fashion. You look at any overlay that exists today. How many of you are looking at or using it overlays with your customers or in your own environments? Anybody? Nobody? No, nothing, no overlay. No MPLS? Heck, VLAN 802.1Q, you're not using that? That's, these are all overlays they are an encapsulation of a protocol that we started with 20 years ago and we keep trying to reiterate the same thing and move forward. So SDN, I don't care which solution you go with, is an idea that the network became broken, that the, the network itself is slow to change. Your virtualization admins, how long does it take them to bring up new servers? <coughs> it depends. Well, you gave me the only IT answer, it depends. <laughs> Okay, if you give me it depends, at least give me a time frame. Take away change management and people. Need 15 days to, to spin up a new virtual machine just because the process is yeah. very long. Uh, and uh, others that take 15 minutes, they get a template and they deploy a template. Yeah. And, and yeah. so it's, it really depends. It, it's all about processes in the companies. IT, you can do everything with IT today. Yeah. Um, at the same level, I, I think uh, for SDN is the same kind of stuff. I can't see today, oh, I'm a storage guy, so, so I think that networking guys have, have, the, have the best life in the world. They can lose networks and they don't lose data, okay? And if you lose storage, you lose data, okay? So uh, I, I'm, so, sorry guys. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, but, what I'm not seeing today in SDN is the simplicity, the ease of use, the, I call it uh, democratization of networking. So there is a lot of ignorance today in the IT world and we have a lot of generalists. It's very hard uh, for most of the companies getting the right people to do the right stuff for storage, networking, <coughs> and virtualization at the high level. So they prefer to uh, deploy simple infrastructures. They, they are trying to avoid complexity. Even if their infrastructure is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger, they try to simplify everything. And uh, this is the promise of SDN, because you can deploy very complex infrastructures, probably, um, but what I'm not seeing today is the simplification of the process. That was that, that's from the, probably from the wrong point of view, which is the storage point of view. Was your question towards the physical appliance of a server or the concept of a server to move a new workload to, which could be a VM? My my, my question, I guess, maybe I... Time frame, right? That was a question. What, what's the time to deploy uh, a new server? Yeah, I'm, so I'm very bad at articulating whatever it is I'm trying to say. What am I trying to... What, what is the problem we're actually trying to solve with SDN? What, what, SDN's great, it's hype, and I can sell it, and I can go make money for my company. What is the actual problem we're trying to solve? Everything, everywhere, apparently. Unicorns and rainbows. That's, that's how I sell it, by the way. But, but what, are we, what are we fixing? Usually there's two parts to these conversations that I don't think anybody really acknowledges. Um, there's the forwarding of traffic. How do we, you know, the cool stuff that we can do at that level, um, distributed firewalls, either in software or, you know, on a fabric level, whatever it is, you know, that's one side of it. But then there's also the way that IT interacts with such a system, right? And I think that SDN's trying to solve that problem too. It's just that most of the time, both of these things are kind of munged together as, as one. That's what helps, you know, confuse people, I think. So I think that's where, that's where we end up with a problem. So you come from the storage side. So are you on the, the disk side? You're an IOPS type 
guy? Like, this is how I'm delivering you the what needs to happen from the performance of the disk? No, I think this is data related. To him. Yeah. Not to you, but you can speak anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it, so to, to all of us, our, our jobs, every, is everyone here, would everyone here consider themselves an infrastructure person? Someone who is mostly involved with delivery of infrastructure? Does anyone here consider themselves irrelevant? Irrelevant? Irrelevant, as in but having no relevance. <laughs> Yeah, I am irrelevant because I have a title that is in marketing, which means I am irrelevant. The rest of you actually do something on a day-to-day -day basis that matters. What we deliver, though, is an application or service that our users use. There's the data and, and that matters, right? When you hit Evernote, when you hit data, whatever it might be, you don't care about their servers, their infrastructure, or who they run on, or the rest of that. You care that your notes and whatever you need are there on every device you use. That's the same thing we deliver as IT infrastructure professionals. The problem of SDN is trying to solve is that networking has fallen far, far behind the rest of it. And you can give a million reasons for the why, I don't want to argue that. But the fact is networking needs to get to a point where it can deliver on demand as fast as the rest of the infrastructure. Can I spin up a VM in a minute? Take away people and change process. Can I spin up a VM in a minute? Can that VM come up with a package so that the, there's even an application and a patch management place in place? Can I then put on the back of that Puppet Chef or Cisco UCS or whatever else and make it come up with the physical server and the host and everything else comes up and now we're at four minutes? Is that fair? Now if I want to deliver whatever the service is from that VM to a user, I have to hit network switches, network ports, firewalls, and load balancers. How long does everything other than the VM take to get up? Weeks, months, forever, never. And when it does, we have such a problem in language translation and such a problem in the way in which we deliver the way that actually happens. Uh, how many firewalls have you looked at? that have a firewall rule that you could not even begin to tell me why it's there. I only know the all, all. <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> this is something that happens all the time. Networking has stayed very archaic. When you look at the world today, the world today, we have cars that can drive themselves. Does anyone own a car that can parallel park itself? That's pretty amazing. I can't parallel park a car myself, even when I'm sober, which is, never happens. Um, but there's cars that can parallel park themselves. And in your network, you have a person who sits on a switch who puts in archaic commands. Any of you ever configured QoS? I don't care whose switches you're buying. QoS configured it? This is amazingly complex, and if you don't hit it right on every box, it doesn't work as a system at all. Networking is not kept up with the rest of the world because we have an importance that's different or whatever you want to say, but it just hasn't. SDN, doesn't matter which flavor you choose, where you're going, what you're buying, what you want to do, is about making the network operate at the speed of where everything else in the system goes. Matt, you just took a job with a company that is advanced in, an I, in IT, and I'm not asking you to talk anything too deep into your job, but your job is about what? Then give me a brief description. Enabling, enabling infrastructure to be more agile and responsive. Enabling infrastructure to be more agile and responsive. Network is the least agile and responsive piece of your data center today. Everything is growing into a more agile and responsive piece. So there, if I look at SDN in this way. If you look at SDN as an umbrella the way you do cloud, SDN is a methodology of how we would look at how I want to deliver networks in the future. I want to be able to look at a network as a system. I want that system to be controlled in a holistic fashion. And I want from that a way to programmatically instantiate that in case I want to use OpenStack above it or my own homegrown tool above it or whatever it may be above it. Is that a fair definition? Now, underneath that, there's different implementations. You've got 
implementations I sell, you've got implementations other people sell, you've got implementations you don't have to buy. There's a billion different pieces. But the whole purpose is to get us to a point where the network is not VLAN config and switch port config on a single given port. Anyone here configured an access control list on a switch connected to a server? Anyone in the room? And we got two head nods. That's a very simple, easy task, right? And it's really easy to maintain once you put it in place. You know, no problem if you have some change and you move it around. And I love you for your sarcastic head nod that continues, right? These network change management processes are terrible. SDN is there to get us past. It doesn't matter which solution you choose or where you go. It's to get you where you already are with server virtualization. It's to get you where you already are with even Linux containers and next generation of where servers are going. It's to get you to where you are with bare metal servers and with storage. When you look at storage today, uh, uh, storage perfect. Are you a, a LUN guy? Do you carve out LUNs and deliver it via SCSI pro protocols for the most part? few years ago, not anymore though. So how do you deliver it now? I don't deliver. Fortunately, I am a consultant. So I can do that people are doing things wrong, but I do that. <laughs> I am in the best place now. But now, <laughs> I love it. I'm in sales. I'm in actually the best place because I walk away as soon as you buy it. I did not say that, please, for the cameras. Um, but, but the idea is st even storage, there's a lot of complexity behind it, but, but it's pooled, it's virtualized, right? We haven't done that in the network, and that's where we're going. And the, the whole purpose is that as infrastructure, we are the most important piece of keeping things running, but we're the slowest piece of getting them there. And when things go wrong, it's hard to troubleshoot. And on the networking side, and for the networking people in the room, you'll like this, for everyone else, you'll hate this, we're the first to blame. When something goes wrong, it's a network's problem. Right? Always a network. So how do we go back? How do we troubleshoot that? How do we look at what goes on? How do mean time to innocence is what I call it, and what not? I didn't name that. It's not mine, but I use it and quote it. Do you want to just don't go together in the same sentence? Fair enough. Uh, but the whole idea is, is we need to get to a point where infrastructure delivers the services and applications that the business requires on time and on demand. And I don't care if you use network virtualization or Cisco ACI or whatever it is you choose to use. The idea is that we need to move infrastructure out of the way of getting things up and running, but without sacrificing that second day operation, without sacrificing when things go wrong, because they do, how do I troubleshoot, not just troubleshoot, remediate? How do I find out where it is? Is that fair enough? All right, so who has a really, like, who wants to be the jerk? Who has a really, really difficult question? Because I think I have, like, three minutes left based on my having no idea. So um, customers that you can talk about that are trialing, um, like warts and all scenarios. For the products I sell? Specifically the products I sell? Yeah. So, um, Nobody's bought any, I, ever. <laughs> Probably not. Um, no, there, there, there's a... The use cases are typically people that are looking for a change in the way in which they operate what they need to do. Now, if you have a data center that consists of four or five switches that has a very low change rate, you don't need my solution or my competitor's solution or any of these other things because you can have one person with a CCNA or whatever their certification is go in and make a config change once a month. It's not really that big a deal. When you have a change rate, and you actually have some scale to what you're delivering and your applications move, now we're starting to see some adoption. So where I'm seeing the biggest adoption of SDN, and it's multiple flavors and I'm happy with all of them, is when the applications and services that I have to deliver change very quickly. My business demands something different from me. I need to make it happen. The network itself today is probably that slowest piece. And when I look at the network, I don't look at that layer one through three network. I look at, there's also load balancers and firewalls and other things that go through, that packet needs to go through to deliver to users. That's the, kind of the slowest piece. So as soon as you start to see any type of change in that, that's where the use case is. So it's access control list management. It's security management. It's firewall management. It's micro segmentation. These are the places that I see SDN being adopted. 
And is it being adopted widely throughout the entire customer base? You all tell me, how many of you work with a customer right now that, that is adopting SDN? No, and that's the problem, right? Of the global IT organizations, what percentage of them are actually um, relevant to a conversation around SDN proportional to the number of IT organizations that are be having it, the term shoved down their throats? Yeah, I think that's right. That's it's the, it's the, the massive problem is that everybody is, is, is saying, is this right for me? And in reality, most of it... Most businesses. Um, it's hard to quantify most businesses, right? So you have to say, um, you know, uh, of uh, the businesses that exist today, how many of them really actually need that agile response to um, on-demand network services? Generally speaking, very few of them. Yeah. I would agree with that. I would say that every, every customer I work with and every data center I've worked with needs a better way to do VLAN management and access control list management. Every single one. But but there is a problem. How how much they are willing to pay for that? Because if you have to change a VLAN every week in a traditional mid-sized company, so they, how can they, how can how can they spend uh, so much money in a new switch capable of being configured magically and blah 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 blah. Well, not not that many. The burden isn't isn't typing the archaic command versus clicking the button. The burden is the process surrounding getting to that point. Once you get the yeah the approvals process, that's the burden, right? That's once you get down to hey this service needs to live this place on the network. It, it's it, you, that's the business relevance of the conversation. And and whether or not we've wrapped it around a button that the person can click or an archaic command they can type into a switch. A product not going to fix that. A product's not gonna fix that. That's right. Ask that's right. Question. That's right. I was looking for trends of, of, of that, you know, if, if it gives management a, f- a sense of safety, we have now one place where we can go and push this off. Do, are we, you know, do we now trust this more than loads of people going off and configuring loads of boxes? It's more of a layer eight thing. I'm saying, because I, I do see myself asking for a VLAN or a trunk or whatever. After the approval, it still takes 10 to 15 days before, you, oh, I, now I got a hole in my calendar to do it. <laughs> So if I put it, if I can put in an, an automated request and it is executed on the approval, that would save me 15 days. But how many networks are, how many people are actually going to say, yes, we will approve that, that process because if there's not a human sitting there doing that, there is errors. There's, there's still a process. How do, yeah, how do I know that that script actually ran and executed and completely made the change that needed to happen. They're always going to have, you know, we can kick off a script to turn up how many servers and how many storage connections and everything and have it happen in five minutes. But you're still going to have that human that goes back through and verifies everything was done. And I think that's, I mean, this is where SDN, it sounds so great because, I mean, I love to script things. If I can replace a human with a script, I'm going to do it. But you still have to go back in and repl- and so check it and verify. Rarely it. should the approver be the one that's actually executing the widget. Right. Regardless of the widget. The problem, problem about a decade ago, when when all QA was done manually, right? Because because the QA department was a completely separate team, aside from the dev that actually created the product, right? Yeah, and they sat down and they're like, "All right, I'm going to be I'm going to emulate a user, and I'm going to try to break this, break what you've done, right? And everything's done manually, and if they miss a, a use case, then bugs get made into the product, and you know customers see it. And uh, test driven development changed that you know dramatically because now all of your scenarios are documented. It's actually part of the code base. And now you have a feedback loop, right? And networking, the tools actually still, I, in my opinion, the tools can get there quickly, but the people need to understand that the same value can be realized. Because now you solve the problem of automating changes. Everybody writes scripts. That's not a big deal. How do we verify that? And then... So, so I, don't, I, I have to interrupt all of you because I believe somebody at my company paid for me to talk. So I don't really care about your own opinions. Um, but no, to, to get back to that and, and, and everything you all addressed, it, where do I see SDN getting adopted? Right now, SDN gets adopted the most in universities who are getting government grants to adopt and test it. That is the biggest place I see it getting adopted. Beyond that, where do I see it getting adopted? In the very large scale companies, in the Ebays, the Amazons, the other places of the world, who can hire people to actually build it for them and take what's already out there and then, like Matt does. Matt, you are what now a network programmer. You're not a network engineer, is that correct? And I, I, I apologize for continuing to call you out, but. Um, though that's where I really see the biggest adoption. Now, does that mean that we're not going to go there? No. 
But the big question is, with any big hype, what is the problem with my business and the delivery of my infrastructure that you can help me solve? If SDN is the term, fantastic. What is it you're actually doing for me? And in some cases, it really works. Now it's moving the needle forward. Right now, a network is in our archaic state. If you've config, I go back to QoS. If you've configured QoS, you've literally like chipped pictures of dinosaurs into a rock with a, another rock, right? It's, and we're still sitting there. That's still how it's done. So we are moving forward. It is moving the needle. It will go slower. And for most of us, it doesn't need to happen overnight. And it shouldn't happen overnight. We'll figure out the little places and the places it goes and where it makes sense. But the overall idea is that you make the network something that is a piece of the tool that delivers the application and service that you're looking to deliver. Is that fair? I mean, every, I mean, all the other parts of the infrastructure, you've got like pools of resources, right? We don't talk about servers anymore, really. We don't. We talk, we talk about compute pools, storage pools. We still talk about the network in terms of, you know, discrete devices, the box. Not even discrete devices. We get further. It's like VLANs and protocols and ports and this, that, and the other. When you want to troubleshoot exchange, you have to get back down to some spreadsheet that tells you which subnet or VLAN that exchange mailbox server is in. That, that is incorrect. That's not how we work in any other part of IT infrastructure. IP management via spreadsheets needs to die. I, I, sorry, I have to understand because for, for what I see, so in, in, uh, historically speaking, now we had the mainframe, then the Unix boxes, then client servers, now OpenStack, uh, yada, yada. And I think that infrastructurally speaking, if I can use this term, um, we are creating another silo here. So SDN is something that works very, very fine with all that OpenStack, Docker, and that kind of stuff. Just if you, if you do a step back in the virtualization environment, it's a little bit difficult. If you go in the legacy environment, it's impossible to adopt. So you are building something new, okay, great but you are not addressing still 50, 60, 70% of the problems that traditional enterprises have because you, it's quite difficult to manage that kind of uh, machines. And, and you know, uh, IBM has released a new mindframe a few days ago. I'm not a fan, but most of the banks all around the world are still there and they will upgrade their mindframes, and they will stay with their uh, Unix machines for a few years more, and, uh, and so the traditional virtualization, because now it's no more the new stuff virtualization, as the old stuff. So we are building a new thing that works very well with the, all these DevOps, all this uh, kind of stuff, where the developer uh, has control. So when I deploy a new container, Probably I need to do some operations somewhere else in the stack to make it working properly. So it worked there, but the, all the the rest of the SDN doesn't work with the old stuff. I know something in the in the networking space, but I think that the Unix is Unix and. Uh, you can do a lot of... You're right, and there are, there are things that we're not going to pull off mainframes. If you look at mainframe sales over the last, what, five years, they're flat. They're not declining, they're not going up, they're just, people are still buying them. Uh, there are Unix systems, AIX systems, there's a lot of different things that we're not going to go rewrite, and rebuild. And I've been in a hospital within the last four years that there was a Novell server sitting under a rack that nobody knew what it did or what was going on. But the light was still green and they wouldn't touch it because they were pretty sure that it touched something else that mattered, that was patient care, right? So SDN's not gonna touch everything very, very, very quickly and all the rest. But if you remember when virtualization came around, when virtualization came around, every application developer said, no damn way my application is being virtualized. Every application owner said, no damn way I can run on anything but bare metal. And now, virtualization is what, 70%? If I throw out that number, is everyone in a happy percent? 70% of workloads. 
SDN is getting to that point. I'm talking about a world in 2007. We're in what, 2015 now, if I, my math is correct, it's not usually. We're moving forward. Is SDN for everybody? No. Do we have SDN fully defined? No. What we do have that is unanimous right now, and any of you please disagree with me, I'm not gonna take offense, is that the way we do networking is broken in comparison into the way we do the rest of infrastructure. You do not go do command line configs on a day-to-day -day basis on any other piece of your infrastructure other than networking. And so I don't care what flavor of networking SDM we go down, I don't care if it's open flow or whatever it might be, we should not be touching a box and hitting that command line to make a config change so that a new application or service can come online. And it's not just because it slows us down to get there, it's when something goes wrong, because guess what? Something always goes wrong. So when you have that data breach and you're now on CNN headline news, how do you go verify that you had the correct tools in place to say, hey, I was in line with laws? Today you go to a command line and you pull all that information back out. SDN is about getting us back out of there. And it doesn't matter which vendor you talk to, build it at home, build it yourself, go anywhere you want to go. It's about moving us back off that command line. You don't do it with your server anymore. You don't do it with your storage anymore, even storage. You now pull it together, you deliver it to a group of VMs, those VMs spin up. Why are we doing this with... What I'm not getting at this point is why, for example, all the hyperconverged players are talking about this pool of resources in a cluster or a machine and they are not uh, hyperconverging uh, networking too. So there are a lot of virtualization, a lot of uh, storage virtualization in these machines, but no networking at all. Uh, it's, so I would like to see the SimpliVity guys or the Nutanix guys with a, an hyper-converged uh, appliance also for networking. Because hyperconverged really simplify the IT infrastructure. I would like to see ACI or NSX or whatever the product embedded in, in those kind of appliances. It's not addressed today. That's, you're, you're drawing in two different conversations. So hyperconvergence is, is a great thing. Um, at home, I use a system called Sonos, who I'm not allowed to talk about, but I love the system. They're fantastic. Sonos is, is great. I would consider it a hyper-converged home audio system. I put a speaker in any room I want. I call it which room it is, and I play all the music throughout my house, and they all play the same at the exact same time. I can walk through the house and it never skips a beat. Or I can have 17 people in 17 different rooms. My house isn't that big, I'm lying. I'm just trying to make myself sound better. Uh, but, uh, and they can all play different things, right? It's a very hyper-converged speaker system. Now, if I was running this hotel, Sonos wouldn't work for me. So hyper-convergence has a place at a point where you're going to scale and it has a cap. When you look at hyper-convergence, at some point, your CPU or your memory or your LAN or your whatever it may be or your disk space is going to exceed the requirements of one other piece. And so hyperconvergence works within its realm better than anything else. But outside of that realm, the same as my music system at home and a million other things, I don't necessarily personally, this is me, I don't think that as a fit. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't draw hyperconvergence into an SDN. Because if you get a very large hyperconverged system, so all the resources are, you have so many resources that you can uh, sustain very different workloads and big workloads of any kind. I agree with you that if the system is very small, you probably run out of storage or RAM or whatever very quickly because probably you have a single work workload running on that system. But if I have, I say, 100 servers, I can run VDI uh, alongside, uh, I don't know, traditional virtualization probably, because some of the resources are used for VDI, but other, other servers are, uh, are less uh, 
uh, impact uh, impact less on on the sorry on the on the storage, but more on on RAM, for example. So it's not true. And uh, on the other side. I, I'm reading a lot about Facebook, Google, and uh, the other kind of guys. They are thinking a lot about uh, very flat uh, uh, networks now. Um, you know, Facebook came up with this uh, the rack, uh, uh, interconnected racks with the switch uh, on top of the rack, and they are building these very flat networks. So, but there are one Facebook, one Google, yeah, probably one eBay. Um, 30 others, okay, I get it. And then, I want, I want an, an SDN more, so for the rest of us, for the traditional enterprise, and it's not today, I would like to see that, not in five, 10 years. Understood, and you, and you said ex my exact point, and I have to close, I've already run over time, my apologies to you and the audience, but. Facebook is a Facebook, Google is a Google. They're, nobody else is gonna run a network or a data center the way they do. The people that build their data centers build their data centers down to, in some cases, the server components. SDN is looking to help you solve a problem. If you have that problem, look at SDN. If you don't have that problem and switch configuration still works for you, don't move forward yet, it's not time. So I have a question. How many ACI customers do you have today? I would love to have the name John Chambers. And if I had the name John Chambers, my car would be much prettier and I could answer that question. That's a, that's, that's that's not a no a, comment question. Yeah, that's not a good <laughs> answer, by the way. But Well, but you were trying to get fired by the end of the presentation show why not give the number anyhow? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Zero. Yeah. We have not sold ACI to anybody. Cisco's been trying. We've been trying very, very hard to sell ACI. And everyone said, no, it's, this is craziness. What are you doing? No, I, I, can't, I literally cannot answer the, the how many ACI question. Can't do it. What we would say is that we are very happy with our growth and our progression, which is meaningless architecture, and that's what I'm allowed to say. And I very much appreciate your time. Thank you very much for letting me talk to you for a little over than what I was supposed to.